This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Patreon.com slash Lights, Camera, Nonsense. Visit Patreon.com slash Lights, Camera, Nonsense to help support your favorite new movie podcast. Now, let's roll that reel. <laughs> but I'm not a neckbeard. I should, I should specify. I, sh- I literally shaved this down because I'm like, I don't want it to be called a neckbeard. Does that happen often? No, but you I'm just walk down I the street. Take, hey, it's the neckbeard. I want to take out the. I want to take out the possibility of being called the neckbeard. They can use it against me if it doesn't exist. <laughs> I just like the idea that in your neighborhood, you are known as the neckbeard. So you're just walking around like, oh, there goes the neckbeard. It's not. It's not as simple as that. It's not as rosy. And- oh, hey, what's up, Nick? <laughs> no, it's Nick. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Lights Camera Nonsense where we give you all the latest movie magic you may have missed. I'm Nick Premium Plus Edition Simmons and I'm Zach Diet Smith. Diet? Diet. Like the like a drink? Yeah. Or just like you're eating healthier. Either or. It's the it's the same concept. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, when I drink a diet that. coke, I don't think I'm I'm drinking healthier. I'm thinking I think there's people who do think that who are like, "Well, at least it's not a regular coke." I mean, yeah, because right. when I drink a regular Coke, I'm like, I kind of want to die. Here, well, here's the question. Yeah. What is the ratio compared to a regular Coke of acid? Like, what? how much acid is in a Diet Coke compared to a regular Coke? I think Coke? the same amount. It's just like they it's took out the down. sugar and put in <laughs> aspartame. So it's, It just tastes less like battery acid to me. Uh, yeah, a little less. You get used to it. And a lot of people don't like Diet Coke. I totally understand that. It's an acquired taste. but uh, It's been around forever, but it's an acquired taste. No, like for somebody who wanted to try Diet Coke. Like they're like, I don't like, Coke, I don't like Coca-Cola anymore. I want to try Diet Coke. Well, first of all, go to Coke Zero. <laughs> you just got, the, the, the marketing guy pops up. Like, yeah, I do I have a drink for you? Ah, <laughs> Mr. Coke, how long have you been there? I'm always here. Huh. I don't uh, know. Who's the mascot for Coke? Is it the polar bears? It depends on the time of year. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, if it's summertime, who is it? The the people in the the city. Yeah, you know. And on March 27th, 2021, <laughs> let's dive into the previews. But before we do that, if you're listening to us in audio form, you're listening to us in the earliest form possible. It's glorious. However, you're not getting all of the great visual video components that you're seeing in the video form, which you can get on Patreon a day early before it's uploaded live to YouTube two days after the audio version. Yes. So, in the video version, you get to see Nick's glorious neck beard. Oh, okay. Well, now it's self conscious. <laughs> so, if you like to, if you're listening to us in audio form, you can listen to us on Spotify or iTunes or Radio FM or Last FM or even. On Ghana, whatever the Indian form of of that podcast service is. Yeah. And, (laughs) but if you want to see all the visual gags and funnies, head on over to Patreon. Submit for $1. Like, that's as low as you got to go to help support the the channel and help support us and what we do here. Lift us up. And And you'll be able to watch us on Sunday, the following day. Or you can just wait, watch it on YouTube, watch it for free, like, subscribe. Leave a little comment. It helps the show no matter what. Let's dive into the previews, though. Zach, what have you been watching? Uh, so I had a bit of a, a little bit of a, a hectic week this this week. So I didn't get to, around to watching much. I because I was busy with work and then. That's right. We had day jobs. Yes, day jobs, and then by the time I was done with that, I, I, I just I ended up like reading mostly. So. I've been, <laughs> I've been reading Boo. the uh, Shadow and Bone series to prepare for the Netflix series. So are you are you excited for the Shadow and Bone series? Are you interested? after reading Shadow and Bone? Not really. No, yeah, it's a pretty boring first book. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, like it's a fine book. It's 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 like it's fine. I feel like I've been spoiled by other YA books, like young adult books, yeah. like. I didn't read Maze Runner, but uh, Twilight. <laughs> Twilight, I, I I was able to get through a lot easier than 
uh, Shadow and Bone. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Harry I, Potter, I, I think, is the right answer I should have used. <laughs> hey, you Twilight. can use whatever whatever example you want. It's it's on you. I'm not going to judge whatever you read in your free time. Uh, I will say uh, Six of Crows uh, is way, way, way better. Welcome to the book review podcast. Well, we're tying it into the show <laughs> because Six of Crows, uh, as well as Shadow and Bone, are both being adapted you into the first season you of Shadow say that but it's pr- it looks like it's pretty much going to be like one episode well, of th- the Shadow and Bone series which then if the Shadow and Bone Netflix series does well enough in the, its first season will lead into the like I believe the first season is just supposed to be the first book right and then subsequent seasons will lead into obviously the subsequent books eventually like spinning off into Six of Crows mm mm-hmm. mhm which sucks because <laughs> Six of Crows is like phenomenally better. Oh, like really? Just all around. Uh, way more interesting, better writing, better characters uh, that don't make you want to beat your head against the wall constantly. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that they're using the characters from Six of Crows to kind of it, make the first season of Shadow and Bone a little bit more exciting. And that's it's kind of sad to I, use a whole other book I mean, to make one other book yeah, more interesting. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, that's it, just... They, they, I think the argument would be just shelve Shadow... Because they're really not connected at all. Right. Um, just like, it's like two different time periods, isn't it? It's like a two or three year split. It's, mm. it's pretty close in time, in the time frame. But um, my dog is crawling out from under a blanket. It's a bold move. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Oh, what time is it? Okay. So that's probably not the best way to do that. I don't know a lot about picking up dogs, tiny dogs. That would not be the way to do it. Okay. I'm gonna put you down. Love you, Tyler. You have an adventure <laughs> like, just now, didn't you? <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll pick you up like a normal fucking human. <laughs> I had a bad. I had a bad angle. It's a bad angle. Plus, I think the slurping came up. <laughs> The recording. So. She's a, she's a, she's she does lick her traumatized. Sorry, Bella. Oh, you're right there. You so you've been see? reading like a like a nerd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all that to say, I I think uh, unfortunately, be, since they're not just doing a Six of Crows uh, show, like I think they should. Um, I, I I think it's just one episode. Like it's not even utilizing. So it's kind of like a Stranger Things season two where they had the whole 11 yes yeah yeah i I think i think that's probably what it's going to be like so anyway i'm trudging i'm trudging through the trilogy i I read it in a weird order where i read six of crows first because uh casey was has just always told me that it's really fucking good and it was it was really good um but before moving on to the sequel crooked kingdom i decided to go back and read the shadow and bone trilogy because i was like you're just kind of mixing and matching yeah. kind of well i was like i want to contextualize this a little bit more in terms of the world and stuff like that hey just a heads up if you are a reader you just stick with six of crows it contextualizes enough like, oh it's, really yeah it's really just no because at, at this point i'm i'm like a quarter of the way through the second book um which is seed and storm i yeah. think uh so it, maybe it does a little better in in the rest of this and in the third book but so far i haven't really found anything in those that is like oh wow i totally missed out on this when i was just reading six of crows <laughs> i was about to sneeze sorry uh, you're struggling here i'm gonna put you down yeah, I've actually been doing the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we are the same person because I think I'm literally <laughs> at the same point in Siege and Storm as you are. Yeah. Um, because the same thing, your wife uh, introduced me to the series. Yeah, Leigh and then, Leigh, Leigh Bardugo should be like giving her some royalties or something. Right. Um, go ahead, go ahead. But I, I didn't read Six of Crows because I'm hoping to read it after reading the the trilogy. So. I haven't read Six of Crows. I don't have that context. So I think when I watch the show, hopefully I'll have finished all five books. Mm. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Yep. I'm interested to see how it plays out because the way that the trailer made everything look, I was like, okay, it's pretty close to how I was imagining things. Yeah. But uh, um, when does it come out? It's like April. April, April 20th or 30th or something. Oh, I thought she would have the day like memorized. 20th. Oh, okay, see, there you go. 
Uh, but that's it. You've just been reading books. Like so, so I, I, because I've been using most of my time either reading or of like just downloading mods for Skyrim and then not playing Skyrim. Um, I uh, I really only watched uh, the second episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier okay. this week. So. so wait, so you have watched it? I have watched it. Okay, yes. so yeah. tell me about that. It's one less show for me to talk about in the laundry list of shows that I watched <laughs> that were released yesterday. Friday, yeah, was, March 26th. So I, I think uh, in terms of like show feel, episode two does a really, really good job of like, I think laying out what we're going to get with the rest of the season. Um, I think the first episode did a pretty good job as well, but I think you really kind of get the feel for the, for the show itself in episode two. Um, feeling very much like Winter Soldier, which I'm in, enjoying quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, it's got the same tone, that mm-hmm. same feel, yeah, which is nice. Yeah. Um, where it's like, okay, we're we're kind of trudging into some like really dark territory here. Um, I, I'm 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 not sure how much to go into it, but you know, like they're really digging deep into like the Captain America like lore. lore. Yeah, like they're just like pull it everything out at this point which is really cool to see um and uh yeah I, I'm, I'm very much enjoying it um john walker Battlestar. yeah yeah I, I mean so that's what i was i was kind of i just fuck it I'll just, I'll just go into it that's fine <laughs> so, it's whatever it, people uh, the people who are really excited to watch the show and follow the yeah, show yeah yeah they're gonna watch it. yeah you're you're getting you know obviously u.s agent is, he's he's a very big part of the show and then uh you got Battlestar who's right next to him um you there's a fucking Isaiah Isaiah Thomas I think his name no is that right the Battlestar no no um hold on I'm gonna check Isaiah Bradley okay who the hell is Isaiah Thomas I don't know <laughs> that's gotta be an actor or something nope basketball player <laughs> This is the right. second one, I'd, but yeah, they they do, uh, yeah, they they throw Isaiah Bradley in there, who is like, you know, the there's this connective tissue post uh, Super Soldier project mm-hmm. after they lose the initial serum, so the the U.S. government is trying to recreate it, and he, Isaiah is part of that sort of experiments. It's very in the comics, it was really linked to the like, I think the Tusky syphilis experiments. I think that's right. I have never heard of this. It's pretty fucked. Um, so it, historically, it, the historical context of the Tuskegee experiments is that to test syphilis uh, um, vaccines, I think, they just started giving out random injections to predominantly well, African-American communities. Right. Um Without telling them what it was. Mm-hmm. And then just judging the after effects. And uh, we still don't really know the the effect of all that in terms of like uh, loss of life or just like long-term health effects and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Isaiah connection is it was the same thing just with the super soldier serum with okay. the, the U.S. government trying to recreate it. Uh, so yeah, they're like really going in hard on like, Hey, U S government, not really super cool on that whole, uh, uh, you know, I think people got that kind of feeling from, uh, the end of the first episode when they realized that they're perfectly willing to replace Steve Rogers as Captain America. Yeah. Well, and there's a through line too. You see a lot of the, the struggles that Sam is facing, even as a, uh, Avenger, you know, uh, with like racial disparity, you know, they're like him and Bucky are in the street and just like talking. And then all of a sudden the fucking cops are rolling up on him or asking for identification and they're like, "Are you fucking serious?" Yeah. And is it this takes guy Buc- bothering you? Like Bucky, yeah. They is this guy bothering? You? Bucky has to be like, "Do you do you fucking know who this is?" Yeah. And then it's then they're like, "Oh shit!" Like it's it's Falcon. But you know, like it's this, it's the same kind of thing as in the first episode with the bank, the yeah. the loan that that Sam was trying to get for his family. You know, so there there's clearly a purpose here more than just like shooty bang bang. Uh, yeah, it's not just heroes, heroes fighting, fighting the bad guys. guys. Yeah. This is about telling a a really grounded story that I, I really, really love that they're 
you know, giving all this context to who Falcon is mm-hmm. as a person and not just as a superhero. Yeah. And they're also dealing with mental health when it comes to mm-hmm. uh, James Buchanan Barnes. Yeah, and I, I did like all the the little the bit of stuff. extra foot or foot travel, I guess. I don't, I don't know how to say how that how to say that. That's not weird. Um, with Bucky in this episode, yeah, uh, because in the first episode, it still kind of felt like they were really relying on that, like, oh, I'm so dour, mm-hmm. like, uh, I'm, I'm so conflicted in my past, and I'm trying to atone for it. But in this, it's very much like he's still that person, but like Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie just have like such great chemistry. They like, really do. They're just like riffing half the time, uh, so that that's really enjoyable. Um, yeah, really, really like, and, and again, the, you know, Winter Soldier was very much in that same kind of place where they did, they did, they had these lighter moments, but the overall plot was mm-hmm. much darker and like, I'd even say Civil charged. War. Charged. Yeah, too. for sure. Uh, Civil War is, I just always rely on the Winter Soldier uh, comparison personally because I liked Winter Soldier more. Mm. I'm not saying Civil War was bad by any stretch, just. Like, I felt like Winter Soldier did what it was trying to do better. Oh, yeah. And more succinctly. I And I feel like that's the same kind of thing I'm getting from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which I'm really enjoying. Where Absolutely. there's, like, it's it's still an MCU property. You're still getting, like, that, that good action set piece sort of thing. But it's also charged and, like, purposeful. Like, right. they're, they're saying something with this. Uh, I will say... Um, you watched it, right? Yes. Okay. I, 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 I would have been asking so many more questions if I did. I figured. I just wanted to make sure before right. I like go in depth on this one scene because I, you know. But is it funny to you that we've had two separate properties, i.e. Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Mandalorian, mm-hmm. and both of them feature a set piece in which there is a fight on top of a moving vehicle? <laughs> I, I feel like... There are only so many different kinds of set pieces that action properties can have. Sure, yeah. Uh, I think. I mean, you, you can I mean, say obviously, that about the Matrix Reloaded. Right, too. right. I mean, well, I mean, I, the the reason why it's funny is because of the the, the timeline, uh, the closeness they, of the two projects, yeah. and obviously, they're two different creative teams. I'm not saying there's any sort of connection right. like that. Like, oh, they they pulled this from there. I just think it's funny. That, I mean, the, it, it could have been the same the, producer o- overall who was just like, <laughs> fight on top of a truck is really cool. Moving vehicles, right? Am yeah. I right? <laughs> There's only so many things that uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, or Falcon and White Wolf, I think. And yes. they're not going to call them Winter Soldier. They, they, they the are. They are. But everybody, okay, they aren't, but they're still, it's in the fucking title. So I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so Bucky and Falcon, whenever they fight, there's only so many different ways that they can have a, a fight where they collaborate. And yeah. Listen. Yeah. Uh, Look, this is... <laughs> um, yeah, and then they, they, that same set piece, it intros very strangely to me because they're like, so the setup is they're, uh, Bucky and Sam are, are like tracking these uh, flag smashers, yeah. right? And they get to this like warehouse that eventually the trucks that the, the flag smashers are loading pull out. Yeah. And so they follow them. Falcon's like fucking jet streaming around the goddamn trucks. And Bucky full on ass sprints past one truck to the second one to yank open the, the, the door. And I'm like, How? they would have seen that. Yeah. I don't know why the, tr- like when he, when he rips open the, uh, the door looking for the hostage. Yeah. Who we later find out is one of the flash yeah. Um, the, the truck, truck behind him is still going at the same the speed, same not speed. doing anything, not shooting at him or anything. And in that same vein, they go the whole fight sequence, and the entire time, there's this one fucking Mercedes behind them. Yeah, who's just following who's at the just same following speed, him. And making you sure think... that they can catch any superheroes that fall off of the truck. So eventually, someone, of course, falls off the truck and smashes into that windshield, and they slam on their brakes, and you're thinking, oh, okay, well... Someone has to come out of that car, right? Yeah. Nah. No. <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> they're either dead or they're just like, I did my job for today. <laughs> they, they they serve their purpose. Yeah. I don't know why, as any normal functioning human being, would, would I think, side with me on this. Why the fuck would you keep falling, like, a full-on <laughs> blowout of a yeah. fight 
where people are standing on top of trucks, flying off the trucks, throwing shields fucking around. There's a helicopter that comes in at one point. Yeah. Take the off ramp, man. Like go somewhere else. <laughs> They've seen the world be invaded by aliens. They've seen whole countries drop, like on the like on the news. In it's like, ah, it's Somebody funny. like in Colorado or whatever, wherever they are. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just somebody in a fucking Hyundai is following behind these three identical sixteen wheelers, and they're like, yeah, you know, I see the new Captain America. I see Falcon, and I kind of want to see where the story thread goes. And uh, then they catch somebody in their windshield, and they're like, oh, shit, my insurance is going to skyrocket. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> this always happens. Oh, Saturdays, man. am I right? It's oh, just man. Like, yeah. Every single time I follow a, 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 you know, a battle on top of some 16-wheelers. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, anyway, it's, it's just a little nitpicking there for, sure. for fun. But sure. uh, ultimately, yes, I, I still very much enjoyed the episode. Um, I, it was funny. I actually forgot it was dropping. Until like late last night, yeah. And I got an email from Disney Plus. It was like episode two now streaming, and I'm like, oh shit, now I gotta watch it. Yeah. <laughs> it actually it dropped, dropped a little bit early. It dropped a few hours uh, earlier than both WandaVision and the first episode of. Wouldn't have mattered to me because I completely forgot until. The- <laughs> and it's like two o'clock in the morning, yeah, or like one yeah. o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah. But every every hour counts when it comes to making sure that you watch the well, latest content. And that's the thing, right? Like, I had forgotten, so I was just operating under normal circumstances, like, just fucking around on the internet for yeah. half the day. And then, like, I wasn't spoiled at all. So, I, I don't know. They, I got the light from I think, the spoiler gods. I think more and more people, at least with, uh, at least with Marvel properties, I would like to think. They're getting more and more cautious. You say that, but then like five seconds after the third to last episode of WandaVision, they're like, oh, Agatha. Oh, boner. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's fair. <laughs> I, sorry, I was thinking boner jokes. Sure, sure yeah. But like out of context, that doesn't mean anything. People would just be like, uh, boner joke. That's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that guy. <laughs> Hate him. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm very much enjoying that. Looking forward to the next episode, if I remember. <laughs> That's right. And there, I also think that there are a lot more people who are also waiting to watch the entire series from yeah. beginning to end. Yeah. Uh, which, I don't know, seems like a lot to me. Especially with Falcon and Winter Soldier because the episodes are longer. So that was the next thing, or the last thing I was going to say, rather. Um, oh my God, it's so nice to have 45 minute episodes. Right? <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's, it's just such a, like, I get why they did the 30 minute runtime. At first. Yeah. For, well, I mean, like it was still, even later on, they were still pretty much doing 30 minute episodes for WandaVision. No, no sorry. I meant like at first, first they were doing it because they were, they were trying, trying to, to obviously set it in the tone yes. of, it being, of the sitcom. Yeah, the yeah. sitcoms. So. Uh, it, like, at, at first it was fine, sure. Um, but, man, you just... like Things feel so much more well-paced on these Marvel things, I think. If you just go ahead and be like, yeah, shorter episode uh, count. Like, yeah. a lower episode count, but longer runtime. It, it equals uh, out to the same amount it of time. It equals out to the same anyway. amount of time, but it lets you like actually sink into the show. Yeah. Um, so I think going forward, I would much rather have that kind of around the 45, uh, even 50 minute runtime with fewer episodes. Yeah. Uh, it, like it takes a minute to get into the mood of a show. And I felt like with WandaVision half the time, it was like, okay, we're, I'm in there. And then like 10 minutes later, Roll credits, yeah. which are another 10 minutes of the show. <laughs> which sucks. I hate that that's the thing. And I know that they're doing it because for the obvious reasons of crediting yeah. the people who work on the project, but still. Well, I mean, you could still yeah. do that, but include like another 10 minutes of the show. Like, yeah. Just to make, if you're going to include that in your quote runtime when you're telling people, oh yeah, it's 35 minutes to 40, you know, 40 minutes on the later episodes. Like, well, if you take 10 minutes, it's out. It's still 30 minutes. Yeah. Just because... You you are including the credit runtime. I get why the credits are there. I'm not like ragging on the, the credits being there in the first place. What I'm ragging on is them going like, "This is the runtime in my PR speech." Yeah, but like, that's not content. There's an idiom to use here, but it's basically it's 
it's extra content, but it's extra content that's taken away because yeah. people are expecting it to be something else. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. Uh, so that was everything I watched. Uh, what did you watch? You watched one episode of. A I show. watched one episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which was very good. It was very good. When Shadow and Bone that comes around, I'll be able to give you an in-depth analysis. Of that. That's perfect because I'm going to replace you with your wife to get a better understanding. Yeah, that's fine. She's prettier anyway. Aww, aww, <laughs> rolling her eyes over there. Uh, well, I also watched episode two of Falcon. I need to stop hitting the mic. I know, right? Um, I also watched episode two of Falcon and Winter Soldier. We already went over that. We just talked about it. I also so much TV dropped yesterday. You're a TV man in one day. It wasn't just TV. It was also some movies. I even didn't get to. Go- I didn't even get to start one of the shows that started yesterday, which was uh, Mighty Ducks. Yes. Okay. Uh, Game Changers. So you mentioned people uh, waiting to watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think that's what I'm going to do with Mighty Ducks. Oh, really? I think I'm going to wait until because I feel like that's not something I'm really going to want to keep on coming back to week to week to week. <laughs> it says a lot about the draw of that show. I mean, it just looks like very safe. You know, it yeah. looks like you know what you're getting with it, and I'd much rather like just, classic Disney fair, like get you know have a block of that. You, you know? should rewatch the movies. Well, I, I I planned to as well. Maybe that's part of the reason why I'm not jumping on the first episode too, because I want to go back and watch one through three. There you go. <laughs> Which I think you, I, you should I, avoid D three. But I think it's I, canonically it's part of. <laughs> the, I mean, yeah, the they call it D three. It's not like. Yeah, anyway, well, you, I mean, they call it Home Alone three too, but that doesn't mean like you got to watch. Different kid, the, I know that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's not, not just they like, replace Macaulay Culkin; Culkin. It's, it's a different, different literally I know, a different I'm just, character. I, I I agree. What I'm saying is you can't just base it off the name alone. It's, it's the, the characters involved in the movie. Exactly. Involved in the story. But you're saying you were, your your statement was it's called D three, so obviously it would be canonically involved with the you're rest right, of you're it. Right. I, I I step back. <laughs> you're right. Uh, so, so I didn't watch that, so I think we can uh, just move on from that. <laughs> we'll get back to that later. Boy, um, I didn't know uh, Mighty Ducks Game Changers was such a hot button issue. <laughs> I just, I'd rather watch the cartoon show. Hell yeah, dude. I'll sign off on that. You want to have a uh, Mighty Ducks animated show we marathon? Should, we should, we I should fucking that. love that show. It's a good show. So much action, mm. you know? It's like... What the puck? Emilio who? <laughs> Get the uh, so, puck out of here. <laughs> so so I didn't watch that. I did start watching. Uh, I, I made the mistake because I didn't have to, but uh, I started watching Solar Opposites season two. Uh, but before I did that, I rewatched season one, which took up my time of watching season two when it dropped yesterday. It's funny. I almost I almost jumped on that. And so then Solar Opposites. To read instead. So, so, yep. <laughs> Solar Opposites, for people who don't know, is created by Justin Roiland, um, and it's basically, you know, aliens from a random planet called Schlorp. Uh, their planet gets destroyed, so they they arrive on Earth with their two replicants and a pupa, and it's basically more Rick and Morty nonsense, but with new characters and a new setting, new environment. Um, it's got Thomas Middleditch in it. Um, yeah, good timing on that one, guys. Yeah, bad timing on that uh, because of recent allegations, but... It's still a funny show. Uh, great. Same voice actors that you've probably heard on Rick and Morty. It's just like if, if you have been kind of clamoring for more Rick and Morty and you've like rewatched every episode from the past four seasons over and over again, uh, it's a great show. Same style of humor. Um, great characters. I think, you know, adult animated comedy on Hulu. I, I recommend it. I started season two and their most, most, epi- most episodes sorry, are uh, self-contained. So you can watch one and then hmm. fuck off and then come back and watch another. Um, so yeah, there's that. I don't really have anything else to add to that because. Well, you watch one episode, you know, yeah. Yeah, I watched one episode. Then. Season one is good, so I could say that. Yeah, it was part of your uh, best of of the, I believe, yeah, of 2020. Um, yeah, yeah. It was in my top ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and then I um, started watching the Irregulars. Ah, the Nef- that's the Netflix one, Netflix. right? Um, so it's set in the world of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's uh, Sherlock, Holmes. Sherlock Holmes series because the Baker Street Irregulars are a group of ragtag home- homeless children, basically, 
who basically are a network of information providers that uh, do like the little cases for Watson and Sherlock. Hmm. Um, I only watched the first episode. I'm sorry. There's a lot of TV, and I'll get to the show that I committed a lot of my time to in a minute. But Irregulars, it was – so we're in kind of this weird time of – getting this neo-baroque art yes. kind of uh, time period where it's like this Victorian era, but it's also got magic. Yeah. It's got some technological advancements. Yeah, we're very much in the uh, center of the superheroes, magic, you know, sort of Everything realm. has to be fantastical. Yes. Like that has to be the grip that uh, uh, grabs people. Mm -hmm. um, off of an original property. It feels off like of original property, property, or even based off of classic works in this case. Yeah, yeah, I just meant, like, uh, maybe not original property, but, like, original setup, I guess, because you're, we're still getting, like, normal adaptations. So, right, you know. So, Sorry, yeah, so. so. But, but they, they can be, be non -existent. They can, yeah. Um, if you have watched Carnival Row, uh, if you watched the trailer for The Nevers, which is coming out on HBO Max mm. uh, in a few weeks. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe like so. Like, mid-April. Mm -hmm. Um if you've watched the Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes movies, you will get a very definite feeling of that. Like, even the font that they use for the title is the same exact font that they I, use for the title. I would imagine that's on purpose. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. Because it, it, they definitely got the tone and style of the characters mm. and uh, the setting and just... Yeah, the even the... Filmed. Not that little bit. Um, yeah, even the um, uh, color correction looks pretty similar. I mean, it's not all green, off, off the trailers, I oh, should yes, say, it, yeah. looks, it looks similar. And you've got a lot of uh, unknown younger actors who haven't really been in much. Mm. They've been in a few things here and there, but uh, uh, no one that I recognize besides the guy who plays Watson, who was in The Witcher. He played um, the warlock that tricks Yennefer into having oh, sex with him. Yeah. Okay. It's that guy. Um <laughs> Watch The Witcher. That's a good show. It is. Maybe um, one day we'll get season two. I'm, I'm okay with waiting because there's there's a lot of great fan fantasies. Normally I am, but I've been really feeling the itch lately. Oh, really? I, yeah. It's just, it's kind of snuck up on me how much I'm like, okay. Well, hey, nerd. You should read the books. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, uh, that's, like, a, that's a project in and of itself. <laughs> be like Henry Cavill and read the books oh, because he, the only reason he read the books is because – he played the, the game, game, yeah, and then See, I mean, they offered the him game. the role, and he's like, "Hold on, let me read the books." Yeah. And that guy is buff as fuck. So, so you're saying there's a one to one connection? Yeah, if you read the books, you'll get buff. buff. Wow, so. that's like the best workout routine I've ever heard. Why has nobody like talked about this? I think that's why your wife reads so many books to get buff. She's buff as hell. <laughs> She's, She's giving us weird books. Okay, so never mind. Um, <laughs> in the head, buff in the head, buff in the head. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like an insult. It does. Oh, yeah, don't, don't mind her. She's oh, a little buff in the head. head. <laughs> you're buff in the head, love. Um, so I watched the regulars. Um, the CGI mm. felt cheap. Mm. It felt bad. It yeah. felt BBC One, like two, circa 2005. Ooh. You know, like the Doctor ninth Who. Doctor yeah, kind of. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, they're learning how to do CGI, but... Like, I didn't feel like there was a lot of faith or money put into the special effects of the show. Uh, I did like the set design. I love the costume costume design. I think everything else about the show seemed like a good big budget show, but I feel like they didn't put the extra effort into the post production of the show. You know, CJ is really weird. I've found with uh, like streaming service shows. I don't know what it is, but even stuff like um, WandaVision and uh, especially the first episode of Falcon. The second episode, I think it's a little cleaner. But that first opening action sequence of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah. There's like some weird uh, jank that goes on with streaming uh, CG. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just budget allocation or something, you know. You, you know that there's a lot of money being put into the Disney product. For sure, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it... it like, just because, like, I don't know if I would necessarily make it a budget issue because it's still present in these shows from Disney Plus yeah. that are getting shit tons of budget behind it. And, yeah. like, some of the Wanda Vision stuff, especially, like, there's some shots of Vision flying around that are rough, man. 
yeah. in that in that last battle scene. Um, but yeah, I, I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like because they have multiple episodes to focus on that they can only focus so much attention on one thing, right? Or like that thing for so long before moving on. Yeah, something with I don't. I can't pin it down. Something with streaming service CG. It might be like multiple directors. Could be. Could be. Yeah. I mean, you. you it's the same production team. It's the same mm-hmm. post production team. But uh, the, the directors are going to want a different look. Regardless. A different design. Yeah. A different look. Uh, a different vision. Yeah. If you will. <laughs> um. So the reg- regulars. I, I want to give it another shot. I want to give it one more episode. I actually have heard good things about some of the later episodes of season one because it all dropped at once. Yeah. Netflix. Um, but I don't know if it doesn't hook me by the end of episode two. I don't know if I'll continue it because there's a lot of other shows that I've started that I want to get more into. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily fair, but the it dropping so close to the nevers. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know thematically they're pretty different and even just like general setup they're pretty different um they still kind of have the same feel and i don't know if maybe that goes into like the whole like kind of time era yeah. sort of thing where turn of the century they're, they're, yeah they're easily out. conflated between mm-hmm. the two but like it's that kind of prestige and uh illusionist sort of effect you know yeah it's the same thing with carnival row like, when I watch the trailer for The Nevers, I'm like, oh, cool, it's another show like that. I'm interested in an old-time period using fantastical elements and even new technology. Like, if you watch the trailer, for the latest trailer for The Nevers, they have, like, a cool rocket car for some fucking reason. All right. Uh, hidden part of it. And I'm like, I, I want to be involved in that universe because yeah. it's got so many different interesting elements. Um, yeah, I need to go back and finish Carnival Row. It's a good show. And there's, I mean, the only thing I'm hesitant about it is that the showrunner left after season one. Right. And the showrunner was the creator of the show. Season two is kind of uh, in the in the ether at the moment, right? Yeah. yeah. I think they were only in pre-production when COVID happened, so. Um, yeah. And I feel like I got kind of the same thing that they were, like, overall that they were going for right. with Lovecraft Country. Like obviously different setting, but I, I feel like similar feel. Taking two, yeah, um, and two different uh, Lovecraft Country was to me amazing. I love that. HBO's been knocking it out of the park with original series. Yeah, they really have, I mean, especially with all the ones that have been dropping on HBO Max. It just makes it feel like more of a prestige channel. It's yeah. like going back to the early two thousands with Hey, remember Sopranos Game of Thrones? What, what? What? Remember Game of Thrones? Yeah. Remember what that was like before I mean, it got. We're, We're going to find out with Messi? the prequel series. Uh, well, there's and do you, <laughs> you see he's, um, Martin signed a, like a five-year project or five, either five-year or five-project deal with HBO. <laughs> you, did, you already have like three in production. At yeah, the you have, how many Game of Thrones shows are you willing George, to George, just finish the books. Yeah. Just, just you should pay him to finish the books. HBO <laughs> should have done that. That actually is not a bad idea. Because then you could put HBO produced on the book. On the book. (laughs) Which is so odd because it's home box office. How does that even make any sense? It's it's so disassociated with its original title anyway. It is, yeah, because we're watching it at home. It's like AT&T, right? Oh, wait, home box office. It's more apt. It's more apt, but people don't think like, oh, home, I'm going to go watch something on home box office. Well, yeah, because no one ever called it that. Right. It's, but it's always been HBO. Everybody home says box. AT&T, you know? Like, nobody says the whole fucking thing. What's the whole fucking thing? American telephone, telecommunication. No, wait. American. American telecommunications tele- and titties. That's it. No wonder they, they made sure to just focus on the, on the acronym. <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, so I watched that. And then the final show that I watched, again, this was all in the span of yesterday. Having been awake at 2.30, worked a full shift, came home, and then watched all this. So you, you did the same thing I did. You just did it in the span just, of one day. Yeah. <laughs> you, just, yeah. you spent your, your, your sleep time uh, to actually watch things. Yeah, I did my job. Zach. Well, I'm not getting paid for this, so. Well, technically you are, so come on. Mm, am I? Am come I? on. Am I? <laughs> I've, uh, uh, after the show. After the show. <laughs> I'll, 
I'll give, give you the money, money after the show. <laughs> Still hurt me. Where's my money? No, oh, God. Um, I watched Invincible, which dropped on Amazon Prime. Ah, the uh, animated, uh, yeah, Amazon show. Yes. Based off the Kirkman comic? Robert, Robert Kirkman uh, comic, um, which has been around for a while. It's, yeah, well, and, and Invincible-style show has been in the works for a long time. For like over a decade. Yeah, it's been kind of stuck in development hell. It's gone through so many different rewrites. I think at one point it was a live-action movie. Yeah. Uh, and then I, eventually this is where we got the animated show. I think uh, now that they're finally starting to see Walking Dead, the, the end of Walking Dead. Yes. They're, fi- they're, they're not saying Walking Dead is ending after this season, but they are hinting at it being very, very close to the end. I mean, they're already well, they're already the movie. doing all the side projects. And yeah, and all of the side uh, shows. They're like, all right. People are dying, even though we've been saying that for like five years. It's now. very similar again to how what HBO had to go through for a short period of time after Game of Thrones, right? But they, they didn't plan, plan for it. They didn't plan for it with all like they AMC they thought, didn't plan for it or HBO did. HBO did. Yeah. Like they're like, yeah, Watchmen and Lovecraft true, Country yeah. will be enough, and we'll mm. they'll have multiple seasons for those yeah. shows. Mm. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be a Lovecraft season two which is point. upsetting it's very even upsetting. though i haven't finished it it's still i i said it before uh and i'll it, say it again and i'll say it again uh it still stands on its own i just wish we got more you know? uh, I, I felt the same way about watchmen, watchmen so uh anyway invincible uh based off the comic by robert kirkman uh who's for me now two for three what was you outcast what was the first one walking dead I would oh, say that's successful. Oh, oh I, I thought you meant personally your your satisfaction with the show. Like you were personally satisfied with The Walking Dead show, which yeah, was a... I, overall, yeah. I just, I fell off of it because there were so many shows coming out at the time and there was a point in the show, not right as he shows up, but a little bit after Negan shows up where I was like, this show yeah, is not I ending. Get, I didn't even get that far. <laughs> like, I, I got to, for people who need context, I got to the end of season seven or middle, I think mid season eight, when season eight was like, ha- when it was halfway done, because they started splitting them into two parts. Just numbers to me at that point. I, I mean, I think I got to the point right, like literally right before Negan showed up. Like, I, I think the last episode I watched, the name Negan was mentioned. Oh, yeah. Like, because they, 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 they hit Adam for an entire season, yeah. and then he shows up at the end yeah. and twice. Mm. Uh, spoilers. Um, actually, tangentially, Robert Kirkman, uh, the main character is voiced by Stephen Yoon. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Yeah, so he's making a comeback. Uh, trying to... Fuck. Uh, just thinking about Minari the, again. So, we're going back to Invincible. I'm sorry. Uh, we keep getting distracted with Walking Dead. Uh, the voice cast for Invincible is phenomenal oh yeah it's got literally any actor in there you want to be in there i'm not even kidding uh a lot of famous voice actors you got um i want to say is it james michael richardson i can pull up a, a cast please, list please pull up the cast list because you've got clancy brown you've got Stephen yoon you've got um one of the actors from community whose name escapes me all the time um, All right, you got Stephen Yoon, J.K. Simmons, Seth Rogen, Mark yes. Hamill, Zazie Beetz, yep, Jillian Manzukis, Jillian Jacobs, Jillian San- Jacobs, Sandra. Oh, Jesus Christ! You weren't kidding. This is stacked. It's Clancy Brown, Walton Goggins. There's that Goggins again. Oh man, Goggins can't disappear. Jason Metazukis, uh, Andrew Ranalis, Malise Jow, and Gray Delisle. Gray Delie. Was that Delie? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Delisle. Oh. Fucking bury the lead here, Zachary Quinto. Yeah, he plays a robot. Oh man, May Whitman. Oh, sorry, Mike. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Oh, uh, sorry, that's Marshall like... Ali. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. I'm telling John you, John Hamm. Yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer. These are for like Anthony these Brown. are for characters. Jonathan that... Groff, Ezra Miller. Yeah. It just keeps going. It's like I'm, I'm literally. I think surely this must be the end, and it just keeps going. The cast list is stacked, dude. <laughs> And, and like you don't, don't even recognize it until you until you pause it and you're like, is that fucking Spock playing a robot in a cartoon <laughs> show that like I almost missed? It's insane. But so Invincible, uh, if you're not familiar with any uh, Robert Kirkman property, uh, it, it it takes a turn 
by the end of the first episode. If you haven't read the comics, you should read the comics because hmm. uh, I believe it's ended. It yes, ended it, it, it's it ended a while ago. Um, but it's basically uh, a world set in a typical Justice League. Uh, it's more Justice League than it is uh, Avengers. It's more DC than it is Marvel. A lot of the characters, you'll see some parallels between um, Justice League uh, comic characters and the ones that yeah, are invincible. Yeah, your Superman, your Batman, yeah. your Wonder Woman. Um, and it, the story basically revolves around um, why am I blanking on his on the main character's name? It's Matt. I never read Invincible, by the way, so I guess I'll yeah. I, yeah. That's that's an, that's one I've I've been remiss in not picking up. Invincible. Well, now you have the show. That's true, Mark. It's Mark. Mark. Yeah. That seems weird. But yeah, I mean, it's in, his name is Marcus. It's Mark. They never call him Marcus. Weird. Uh, but the main character, the story revolves around uh, Stephen Yoon's character, who is basically a teenager who's waiting to get his powers when he was told younger by his superhero father, who's essentially Superman, mm. voiced by J.K. Simmons, which is the best casting possible. Um, I mean, I always will take, if that's the J.K. we need. That's the J.K. Know? we need. That's we don't need a, a reporter telling us to hate Spider-Man. We need him as Superman. Oh, I just meant J.K. Simmons. Yeah. Like, I'd rather have, if the world needs one J.K., let's take J.K. Simmons. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I would like to think he's the uncle I've never met. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because you know, it's the same last name. Yeah. Um, it's just a common last name, but it's, he, he's basically a teenager who's waiting to get his powers. And then once he discovers he has powers, uh, he learns to become a superhero and everything that comes along with it. And it seems very, like a very standard DC cartoon fair. You know, it's got the same art style ish to the, like the justice league, the justice league show. Uh, and at first it bothered me how close it was. Cause I'm like, I've, I've seen this before. It's just kind of like, Oh, whatever. It's my, and then the story takes a turn. Right. But, I mean, that's kind of the point, right? Like, it's... I, I remember when the comics were, were, like, really big that, that it was kind of like, oh, well, like... Kind of like the thing Kick-Ass was trying to do, where yeah. it's like we take superheroes and it looks like on the outside it's pretty normal, like your normal, like, mm -hmm. uh, traditional superhero story. And then, obviously, it, it flips on... I don't know how that flip comes about or what that flip exactly I, I don't is. want to say um but i do know that there is a flip on it which is kind of the driving force on it. well i, I think the main difference between invincible and kick-ass is that kick-ass is trying to lampshade a lot of the uh tropes mm -hmm. of the superhero franchise but also keeping it grounded like nobody in kick-ass has right legit superpowers, superpowers yeah. just people dressing up mm -hmm. but, but this, this one people actually do have superpowers i mean you have aliens coming from other dimensions trying to invade earth yeah and you have talking robots and people projecting barriers and stuff, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you're able to get a little bit more crazy. Uh, I can't. I don't really want to say too much more about the story. The first three episodes are definitely building to uh, an arc that I'm really interested to see where it goes. Uh, there's a lot of questions that I would love to have answered. Um, and it just feels like it's. It feels like a, a really mature show that even doesn't have to be mature like the the rated r dc movies that have been coming out over the last several years always felt excessive to me like yeah they are turning up turning up the rated r to 11 just because right and to get that kind of draw of like oh it's ultra violence right like the killing joke or uh the dark knight returns or any of the ones that have been adapted recently and i'm like they're doing it because yes they're based off of violent comic books but at the same time they're doing it because that's what comic book readers have been wanting to see. Yeah. This feels like it's doing it very purposefully to jar you, yeah. to scare you, to give you a sense of dread whenever a certain character shows up on screen. So it's, I'm very interested to see where it plays out. Nice. Um, first three episodes are on Amazon Prime Video. Highly recommend them. They're the 46-minute length. They're not 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. So not what I expected. Yeah, yeah that's, pretty, I, that's pretty different for an animated show. Yeah, um, I think it's because they're trying to definitely condense Multiple the story arcs, a little bit, but they're yeah. not cutting anything. Gotcha. So, hmm. very interesting. There's definitely um, 
it, it feels very condensed. Like it, it's like scene to scene, you need to be paying attention. Yeah. Not a lot of fluff dialogue. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see where it goes. Yeah. It's interesting that um, we're kind of seeing this little bit of a renaissance with uh, streaming services doing. I say renaissance. That's kind of a weird word for this. Uh, but like larger implementation of like week to week releases. Yeah. Um, whereas up front, you know, the, the, the draw of streaming was that, you know, you got it all at once, you know, yeah, at which first. Netflix is still doing to, you know, in that regard and who does it kind of regularly, right? Like, I mean, it just depends on what, it depends on the show. show. Solar opposites did the uh, entire season. Yeah. But of... then you have like handmaid's tale, which is, which week like releases in batches. Yeah. yeah. I think it depends. It definitely depends program to program. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's like the the showrunner too. That's a decision on them. Or, yeah. You know, I don't know. Could I mean, we saw them. with Zack Snyder's Justice League, he had the opportunity to split it into six different parts or four different parts. Yeah. And uh, he said, fuck that. Are you part of the the um, revive the Snyderverse train? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> no. You're not going to go back I, and watch it in black and white? When I, I, I was tempted to just to say that I did. But There's more read, Jared Leto. No, when I read, I read that it's like an extra one scene. Is it I'm the like, society I'm not sitting scene? through this movie for a, a third fucking time. Because uh, it's essentially the same movie for 95% of the entire thing. So, why? Also, no. Also, why? I, I feel like... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is that, that I, I, that's I, I, your general thought process on the Zack Snyder uh, Justice League is just mouth agape and looking into I, the. Distance. I understand where people are coming from wanting to get more of that universe, like a cohesive sort of. Thing. Yeah, they yeah. want it, they want more context for that nightmare scene that Zack Snyder filmed uh, when doing the reshoots, mm. just because the whole night you you never you, you haven't watched it, nope. but. The, the extra Jared Leto scene where he doesn't say we live in a society. Yes, yes. I've seen that that is... A, they use that. They, they fucking... They tricked they, you. They use that for uh, publicity. Yeah. Um, but the only reason he films that scene was to have a scene between his, his Joker and uh, his Batman. Yeah. To interact and to have a cool little conversation. But... If you take that scene out of the movie, it doesn't make Zack Snyder's Justice League any worse or any better. Yeah, it's just there. It's just there. The same thing with Martian Manhunter and a lot of the extra scenes that are in there. There is, I think it was IGN that calculated how much slow mo yes. is in the movie. I didn't, I didn't read this, uh, but they did. I did see that they did uh, the calculation. Yeah. And it's like ten percent of the movie. It's ten, yeah. You could literally cut out like. 20 or 30 minutes of the movie mm -hmm. based on how much and there is so there's one slow-mo scene that needs to be slow-mo it's the flash yeah. going back in time scene but everything else does not there is literally a, a scene where I was falling asleep where it was Aquaman walking away and the woman was smelling a sweater and, and singing oh right yes <laughs> uh, and I fell asleep or I nodded off and then I woke up and it was the exact same scene because he was still walking to the water uh, in slow motion. You gotta get Momoa's pool. abs, man. Like, look at all the ripples. I've seen those abs before. Come on. I watched What's Aquaman. More? I watched Aquaman. Yeah, well, look at these again. You look at the abs. In, in, four, to, in four, three aspect ratio. Cool. I have to squint <laughs> now. You're getting more of the abs. All I'm right? getting more, like, height of the abs yeah. than width. Look, in other circumstances, the top of the ab would be cut off. Now you get all of it. Wait, why would the top of the ab be cut off? It's not centered on the no, abs. No, it is. Like, that's the shot. It's just, it's centered on the abs as he's walking forward. Like, we know why you're here. Is this how you think Aquaman walks? <laughs> yeah. He very much struts with well, his shoulders. Well, he swims most of his time. He doesn't know how to walk. I guess. I guess. I just, I, I understand why people want to see sequels and they want to get context. But at the same time, just let DC do the one, the one-offs. I'd much, I am... A thousand percent more excited for the Batman than I am for uh, the Suicide Squad, which is and that's the James Gunn yeah. Suicide Squad. I just I'm excited for it, but like at the same time, if I never saw James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, I would also be okay. But Starro, man, I'm excited for Starro. The, the trailer dropped for The Suicide Squad. Yeah, I think it was like yesterday, right? Uh, or the day before. The day before yesterday, yeah. 
and it was a rated R trailer, and we actually had a friend of ours, a mutual friend, who was like, "This looks terrible." I don't think he. I don't think he said that. He said it, it this looks, looks bad. bad. Right. Sorry. <laughs> same thing in my eyes. Bad and terrible are the same thing. I I, I apply some like gray area between bad and terrible. <laughs> I, I get called terrible all the time, so I just who that to... who you tell me who's doing that right now. I will go talk to them. Um, I'll talk to their them parents. A sternly worded letter, um, and I, I get where he came from, like because I could see somebody who's not necessarily keen on the style mm. of James. They don't want another Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, well, and the the, the trailer is pretty but weird it. because it, it's like a mix between Guardians and like Ayers. Yeah, is that Ayer or Ayer? David Ayer. Ayer. Yeah. Um, Suicide Squad. You know, like it still has like the color palette and everything, pretty gray and green. Yeah. Uh, but then it's like, but the humor and pacing really seem like gun. Yeah. You know, so it's it's kind of like this mishmash of like sensibilities it's, it's like it's a two little, different little directors awesome. kind of smooshing together yeah release the air cut needs to die that's one thing oh yeah i don't want to i definitely don't want to see any more of that movie actually let's 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 let's, let's go back let's rewind like two minutes i hate it when we do that uh uh this makes me re- think of ace ventura the whole scene <laughs> let's, let's rewatch ace ventura after this. oh love it love it uh, when nature calls, not the original. It's Why just, both are good. Oh, they're both, the they're the both first good. one has not aged particularly well in some aspects, but um, the first one, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> also the second one. There's a lot of that's true. Yeah. A lot of jokes in that one. Yeah. <laughs> we could talk about Ace Ventura for another forty minutes. Yeah. I can guarantee you. No. Um, the 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 repercussions of the Snyder Cut. Do you see it being a lasting? Uh, indicator of how hollywood is going to operate in the future um i don't know if it's necessarily that i think if anything i mean we haven't really gotten solid numbers obviously because it's too soon about like subscribing like like uh, subscriber influx right to hbo max because that's the idea is that you get a bunch of people specifically subscribing to hbo max to watch zack snyder's Justice League. I hate that I have to call it that. Just call it Snyder Cut, man. Snyder Cut, yeah. It's so much quicker. Yeah. Uh, that's um, the only reason I call it that. Um, and we we haven't gotten that data, if we ever will, you know? So I think it probably depends on if it is there's a tangible benefit to that, because I could feasibly see it as them going like, uh, well, this movie made shit. Or maybe not made shit. <laughs> It like it was received really poorly, which then cut into its long lasting theater revenue. Right. Right. Like Justice League did okay by all by like opening numbers accounts, but then because of all the reception, you know, it yeah. doesn't stay as long. And like recurring ticket sales is what makes the difference between a Justice League and an end game, right? Yeah. yeah. Like people going back to see it three times. Exactly. Um so I could feasibly see them using this sort of thing as a correction to get revenue elsewhere. It's like, oh well, here's it's a sense it's the director's cut, right? Like we've yeah. been doing director's cut for ages. And there's all these examples of like, well, director's cut is better. You know, fuck Blade Runner. You know, yeah. like Blade Runner is like mm. Well, I mean like generally when people think about changes from the theatrical version right. to the director's cut, that was like the synonymous with director's cut is Blade Runner, and then you had Kingdom of Heaven, right? And then I think Prometheus. We're and... only using Ridley Scott as an example. <laughs> no, it's all yeah. hey he Ridley lot... Scott. <laughs> Ridley Scott is always being screwed over by the studio who he works for. But to be fair, Ridley Scott, uh, for those who need context, is kind of an asshole. He his record is also fairly spotty as well. <laughs> yeah, with his filmography or just with filmography. Okay, yeah, so. Like, nobody's claiming for a Prometheus uh, director's cut, and there's a reason why. Yeah. I still like Prometheus. I like it as an idea. Sure, yeah. If you can see the building blocks. In the context of the alien universe, I like it as an idea. I technically still need to watch Covenant, but... I don't have to. I don't have to. I don't have to do anything I don't want to, but in the sense of, like, getting the whole alien story, yeah, I do need to watch Covenant. 
So, um, Zach, Zach uh, if, if people, people wanted to learn more about our opinions or thoughts on things, things how, how would they be able to contact us? They could email us at either lightscameronsense at gmail.com or... Uh, Don't make it complicated. I, I, you see, you're putting me on the spot, so now I can't just riff on whatever... <laughs> You're you like every every time I come up, up with for the email, no, that's, that's when you start coming up with an email. You set me up like five seconds. Uh, let's do. It's like you're at a candy store. <laughs> An adult. Do at a candy I want store. a bunch of crunch or M M&M. and M? Motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can email us at bunch of crunch. No, that's a, that's a trademark. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, you can no, you do it. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of being judged every week for my email. If you want to hear it, our thoughts, our opinions on uh, what we think about movies, or you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can email in at SnyderCut at LightsCameraNonsense. I feel like we've already done that. <laughs> See, it's shitty, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, not so fun. Someone's over here judging your fucking email. Questions at lightscameranonsense.com. <laughs> and we will answer it live on the show next week. Subtle judgment at lightscameranonsense.com. <laughs> Subtle judgment at lightscameranonsense.com. You're making the post production of this very difficult. Hey. <laughs> I know. I, it's my edit week this week. For those of you who haven't been able to tell which episodes are edited by who. Uh, do, do we want to kind of mention the uh, elephant in the room before we sign off real quick? Oh, yeah. Hey, um, so if you haven't noticed, uh, we didn't do news. Yeah, we included it. We talked about news. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so I think going forward, uh, what we've decided is that we're going to try and be a little bit less. Um, here's the news docket sort of thing. Uh, we're we're going to try and incorporate some things like we did this episode. But going forward, it's pretty much just going to be us riffing on whatever we watched. For, you know, just to kind of get back to basics uh we, we thought we were getting a little bit um uh, Rest, res, we were kind of restricting ourselves with yeah. the format that we were doing so we're kind of i don't want to say regressing because we're really kind of going back to yeah. a more comfortable format for both of us when it that's comes true to recording yeah this we're, we're, we're not necessarily getting back to basics we're just getting more comfortable again right um which you know i think is more enjoyable for everyone if we're enjoying it yeah, we're, we have more fun when it comes to being able to do it this way. And if that means the podcast is going to be only an hour long or if it's going to be an hour and a half long, who's to say? Who's it just depends say? on how much uh, we want to talk about this week. Yeah. Obviously, there was a lot to talk about this week, so the episode is a little bit longer. Maybe when uh, Mighty Ducks Game Changers is over, you'll get a 40-minute dissertation from me. Fucking hope not. <laughs> but this has been Lights, Camera, Nonsense, keeping you updated despite our best efforts. Make sure to tune in every week for all the latest news, reviews, and what else that. How do you do? Perfect. We'll see you next time.